10 road cycling hacks you need to know. Number one, instead of buying disc brake cleaner, buy some isopropyl alcohol, which is almost pure alcohol you can get for about seven pounds for a bottle like this. This is a litre. It's completely safe to use on your discs and braking surface if you have rim brakes too. It's quite aggressive. I would recommend wearing gloves or keeping it off your hands for any extended period of time because it will dry out your skin. But if you put a little bit of this in a squirty bottle, you can spray it direct on your discs and then use a clean cloth to wipe them down. It will then evaporate after a few seconds. A little goes a long way. I've had this for about a year. I've only used that much. Cheap, effective, carb drink mix. Using a carbohydrate drink, you're able to fuel with carbohydrate without having to eat food, which is very convenient if you're doing a race or a hard session. Premix stuff is very convenient, but expensive, and you can mix something pretty similar for a fraction of the price. It doesn't involve this, but it does involve a bidon. One scoop of maltodextrin powder, which you can buy on most websites that sell supplements to gym goers, is 100% carbohydrate tasteless powder. You can get a big bag, really cheap. One scoop of that in your bottle, followed by either a pinch of salt or a pinch of electrolyte powder, also available on supplement websites. Top that up to taste with some fruit squash or cordial. The important part here is fructose. So you want one that's no added sugar. That will mean that the sugars from this, the fructose, will absorb in a different part of your intestine to the sugars from the maltodextrin. Fill the rest up with water and you've got yourself a carb drink. Also bear in mind that the primary electrolyte that you lose through sweat is sodium. So using a pinch of salt instead of the fancy electrolyte powder will make the drink even cheaper and do the job almost as well. Very far I'll go for it, sweet. If you've got a big hole in your tire and you're scared that the inner tube might punch you straight away if you put a replacement one in, then you might want to use a bar wrapper or a sweet wrapper or a gel wrapper as a boot to put in between the new inner tube and the hole. You can adjust the total reach of your bike for free by just rotating your handlebars. Loosen both of the clamps that are attached to your shifters by peeling back the rubber hood and using usually a five millimeter Allen key to undo them. Depending on how much you wanna move these, you might have to unwrap the top bit of your bar tape, then undo the bolts on the front of your stem so you can rotate the bar. For the shortest reach, most bars can be rotated to be level at the end of the drop. You can put a spirit level on this to check it. Obviously this can change depending on the shape of the handlebar, but worth noting that lots of bikes come supplied with handlebars rotated in an odd way. It's worth experimenting, finding what works for you, but it's a brilliant way to adjust your reach without spending any money whatsoever. If you have misplaced or do not have a tire lever like this one, you might want to use a spoon like this one. Use the back of it exactly in the same way. If you have carbon rims, you might want to use a plastic spoon less likely to damage the rim. It works so well. You might be best off first though, checking if you can get the tire off without any tire levers at all. A lot of tires you can do this with, depending on the rim combination. You wanna go around the whole tire, push it into the channel, which is down in the middle of the wheel, which will release all the tension that the tire has built up. And then you should be able to pull it over the edge of the wheel and wrestle it off. Just like that. I always prefer doing it this way because there's no risk of you damaging a wheel. Even with a plastic tire lever, it can happen. Grease those moving parts. This isn't really a hack because it's just your dumb thing, but a lot of people overlook it and it's always the cause of creaks on a bike, which can get expensive if you go to a bike shop to get it diagnosed. Always grease surfaces that are not designed to move past each other. Big pot of grease like this will last you a lifetime of regular use. This one I've had for about 10 years and you can see inside there's loads and loads left and it's not that much more expensive than the little pot you can get. Most common causes of creaks on bikes that you can solve by greasing them are headset bearings, through axles, quick release skewers and the surfaces in between your chain rings where the bolts go in. All of these are easy to access and worth checking before you take your stuff to a bike shop. Washing up liquid is actually a great degreaser. Way stronger than you think. If you use it right on your chain and cassette, you can get things looking sparkly. Add this to some warm water and use a rough brush to apply it. Scrub your cassette and make sure your chain is going round and you'll soon have a very sparkly drivetrain. Using just that, you'll be 90% of the way there. If you wanna use some further stuff like GT85 or a stronger degreaser, that's the time to do it. And then make sure you dry it all off and add some chain lube. That's a really easy and quick clean. Don't underestimate fairy liquid. If you're worried about your bike's paintwork, then car shampoo is an excellent way to clean it and much cheaper than bike specific products. If you're gonna do this, make sure you use a sponge, not an abrasive brush. Depends on which bike I'm cleaning, whether I use washing up liquid or car shampoo, but car shampoo is definitely the less abrasive one and doesn't contain anything that's gonna scratch up your paintwork. Lever reach adjustment. 
you can actually adjust how far away your levers are from the handlebar, so the pivot point inside the shifter. Most shifters, if you peel back the hood, you'll be able to find a very small Allen key hole, usually two or three millimeters, and you'll twist this either way, depending on whether you want to make the lever further away or closer. Brilliant if you have very small hands or very big hands. Bear in mind your brake caliper might need to be adjusted if you're using cables after doing this. Use soapy water when you're seating your tires. Loads of tires and wheels these days are tubeless ready, which usually means you have to pump them up quite high to get them to seat and pop into place. Most tire and rim combinations will seat before they reach unsafe pressures, but sometimes they need a little helping hand. Some soapy water applied to the rim and the tire with a brush makes things slide much easier and your tires should pop on with much less pressure. That marks the end of 10 cycling hacks that you need to know Put your hacks down in the comments if you have any suggestions and share them with this community. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.